What is the scariest creepiest theory you know about? Okay this one is rough so please bear with me. So the common time travel question is would you go back and kill baby Hitler? Well imagine if that was you. To us in the current timeline you would be a hero that killed someone truly evil before they had chance to corrupt or endanger anyone but to the people of that time you are a monster. A baby killer. They couldn't exactly explain to people. I was sent from the future to kill this baby to save hundreds of millions of lives. No one would believe him and would just assume he was some nutcase. Or maybe they are not allowed to tell anyone as per the agreement with the future government. It makes you wonder all the people through time that have been called monsters for killing babies. What if they were just heroes from the future saving us all? They couldn't tell anyone either. This isn't a theory, but I just think it's cool. You know how movies and shows always have this ancient alien race that came way before us. And we're the new species? Well technically, most likely that's wrong. We are near the beginning of the universe. If the universe was a person, we would literally barely be a cell, not even formed. In reality, we are the ancient species, we are the ones that come before, we are the ones some future civilization may see. Just a crazy thing to think about. Dang, in my mind, we're at the pinnacle of development. I guess the reality is we are far from that. Can't imagine how different life will be thousands of years later. Can't even comprehend the fact that I will be long forgotten by then. I have a sleep disorder that causes nightmares and dreams that are often indistinguishable from reality. I live whole lives with partners and kids or work jobs in strange places for decades and full technical details and reach old age before waking. Sometimes it's so intense that I sob and grieve for the lost relationships as if my real life partner has died. I am confused to be my own age and be here, now. The theory that this life is a dream simulation type thing feels pretty real to me. My brain seems to create whole viable realities anyway. Not much of a theory, more of a conjecture but, fossilization is actually quite rare. It takes extremely specific set of circumstances for a dead organism to even become fossilized let alone survive intact to the modern day to be found by humans. Because of this, there are likely millions of species we will simply never know about because none of them ever fossilized. For all we know, we might not even be the first intelligent species to evolve here on earth. There could have been a species that formed a civilization at some point and then went extinct later on. But we'll possibly never know that because there are no fossils that formed survive today. It probably wouldn't have been an advanced, industrialized civilization like the kind we have today as we would have surely found evidence for it by now. But I could easily see something on par with ancient Egypt disappear completely after millions of years. Any type of human trafficking. Poor young kids, vulnerable women trafficked for sex, kept in cages in tiny apartments without beds or any amenities, many forcibly hooked on drugs to keep them compliant and dependent on their owners, forced into terrify sexual encounters, barely fed or clothed. In places like Dubai there are tens of thousands of Asian manual laborers who are essentially slaves who have their passports removed forced to live in severely overcrowded apartments, with upwards of 30 plus men sharing a one bedroom shoebox apartments, no access to medical care, not access to legal support, paid barely enough to feed themselves, who went into Dubai on short term contracts to provide for their families, but unable to get home, they then lapse the legal period of their visas and contracts, which means if they go to the police to try and leave back home, they face steep fines and jail time for overstaying, which serves as a deterrent to them reaching out for help, any of those scenarios is purely awful and terrifying to me. The Valer Incident. September 1979. A US Valer satellite detected a double flash of light over an area of the ocean between South Africa and Antarctica. The prior 41 double flashes observed by the satellite were from nuclear explosions as this is what they were designed to observe. There also happened to be a typhoon happening in the area at the time so it seemed like someone wanted to detonate it without being caught. Carter administration reported that it was a natural occurrence due to a small meteorite hitting the satellite. However many other independent sources and even other countries have reported that they did indeed find traces of fallout and radiation. Because of the geopolitical climate of the times, there's very strong evidence that it was in fact a joint nuclear weapon test carried out by South Africa and Israel. 
and the US scrubbed the information regarding it because they didn't want to paint their allies in Israel in a bad light for working with apartheid era South Africa. Strangely enough, Israel and South Africa have never denied having nuclear weapons programs, nor have they ever denied a joint test being responsible for the Vela incident. Israel's nuclear program is really shady, but I don't want to wake up with two gunshot wounds in the back of my head, so I will leave it at that. The last neuron in the brain can fire up to 72 hours after clinical death. What is classed as still being alive? Your heart stops or your brain activity stopping? As a nurse this plays on my mind. I always talk to the recently deceased as I would do usually. Hearing is the last sense to go anyway so chances of people can still hear for a short time after death. I have to confirm death on a daily basis. We check heart sounds, breathing, eye response and pain response. But part of me knows that electrical activity is still going on in there. I'm a hospice nurse and morbid thoughts are what I do best. The man from Tord. He was going through an airport and when asked for his passport he gave the people a fully legitimate passport except the country he was from didn't exist. He argued that it was right between France and Spain and had been there over 200 years. Since the passport was legitimate but the country wasn't on the map they put him up in a hotel for the night with guards outside his 4 story room. He was gone, along with all his things the next morning. Not a trace. I also heard that he had Japanese stamps in his passport that looked legitimate and when they showed him a map to identify his country he started freaking out when it wasn't there. Some smart people I know say life extension tech will exponentially explode in the next century, transforming adult lifespans the same way antibiotics, vaccines, and sanitation irrevocably transform childhood survival rates. If we hadn't blocked stem cell research, we could be the ones living youthful nearly disease-free lives but we've missed our chance by one or two generations. If the human body senses trauma it is unable to combat, it will switch off metabolism, pump endorphins, and slip into a pain-free dissociative state. In essence, shutting down. It's been seen in air crashes and lots of places really. Basically your body can switch itself off. During the Challenger accident from 1986, Whenever the shuttle exploded, the ground crews had the astronauts EKGs and vital scans. After the explosion, the astronauts were still alive. Theory has it that they were cognizant the entire time until they crashed in the ocean. This is what actually happened. NASA never wanted to admit that the astronauts didn't die in the explosion. But there is a major probability that they were not conscious when they crashed into the ocean. The Dark Forest Theory this explains the Freemi paradox, why we haven't seen any other advanced life forms despite the vastness of the universe. Other advanced life forms don't send out signals into the rest of the universe because they're worried that something more advanced and dangerous is going to find them first. There's another idea that other civilizations know there's something out there but don't send any signals because it has no reason to not wipe out the entire planet. There's a science fiction book based on this and I think this quote explains it better than I can. The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful, because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life, another hunter, angel, or a demon, a delicate infant a tottering old man, a fairy or demigod, there's only one thing he can do, open fire and eliminate them. Our Dumbass is sent out a golden recording of Johnny B. Good blasting through space. Cosmology can be disturbing. For instance, I recently learned of dead end trips. There are some destinations that you shouldn't try for. It's possible to travel so far away from where you started that the expansion of the universe will exceed the speed you were traveling at. You can't return home, because home is receding faster than you can travel. You can't reach your destination, because it too is receding faster than you can travel. You can no longer get anywhere, only get further away from everything. You cannot reach any destination, even if you travel forever. A lot of comments bringing up the Femi paradox to explain the lack of evidence of extraterrestrial life, when by all accounts we should be seeing alien life all over the universe. Here's another, unsettling, 
Explanation. If you're scuba diving above a coral reef, and you know that there should be fish all around you, but you don't see any, it's most likely that they have learned that for some reason it's important not to be seen. And since you're a newcomer to this environment, chances are it's not you they're hiding from. Frick that and my ability to sleep tonight. Basically heat exchange theory, that one day all of the heat we use in order to create energy will be expended and the universe will be stuck in a heat lock. I mean it's the heat death of the universe, it's not really a theory, more just something that's straight up going to happen, just a really long time from now. Philosophical zombies, theory that a good portion of the human race lack conscious experience. If you've ever dissociated or done something and don't recall, driven home but have no recollection, your brain acting on autopilot, that's what they're like, they do everything required to be human, they ape emotions, go through life, they just lack sentience. The theory that scented candles starting getting poorer views at the same time COVID hit the US, makes you wonder how many people have mild COVID before we even knew about it. Pairing the lack of taste and or smell as one of the main symptoms associated with mild covid cases. Sometimes I'll encounter random strangers that I get a strange vibe from. Like they're noticing me more. It's made me think, what if there are time traveling tourists just walking around. And I'm someone important and they want to meet me before I do whatever it is I'm going to do. This is great haha. <laughs> Paradoxical undressing. A phenomenon frequently seen in cases of lethal hypothermia. Shortly before death, the person will remove all their clothes, as if they were burning up, when in fact they are freezing. Because of this, people who have frozen to death are often found naked and are misidentified as victims of a violent crime. But wait, it gets even weirder. Once they've undressed, the dying person will frequently try to crawl into a small, enclosed space. For which reason, victims of hypothermia are often found naked, squeezed into cupboards or beneath beds. This is called terminal burrowing behavior. All sense of reality seems to fade. Sounds like the behavior of a wild animal. Yeah I was told once that when hypothermia kicks in you start feeling really warm cause that's the feelings of your organs shutting down. I saw a video about the theory of grey goop. In which one day we invent micro robots used to break down waste, but could somehow evolve to consume all carbon based organic matter. This would eventually lead to them consuming all life on earth. I was mildly freaked out by the idea of it. It'd be the most horrifying means of extinction. Didn't Futurum I have this sort of happen with Bender cloning himself down so many times into microscopic size? That you might be aware of everything happening to you during surgery. The anesthesia keeps you from moving and causes you to forget. Yeah before my wisdom teeth removal the nurse told me that patients can still partially respond to the commands of the doctor while under anesthesia. They just don't remember this afterward. When I went under I didn't even remember falling asleep. The one that bugs me was the one about the guy who was last seen in an airport. There's video of him just wigging the frick out and running away at full speed. They linked the surveillance footage and you can see him run all the way off the premises. He was never seen again. There's lots of theories about what happened. None I wanna look too far into. That we can sense when someone is watching us. So when we're alone and we get that feeling, someone is probably watching you. It's scary that there are thousands of serial killers out there at any one given time who often just blend in with the rest of society and live normal lives. Many will never be caught. The comment, criminals are so stupid. No, criminals who get caught are stupid and we can't catch the smart ones. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory which states that this has already happened, Douglas Adams. I'm not sure if that theory is connected to the one which talks about the apocalypse happening when someone calls God by his real name. That mind control actually exists. It's something that would never go public because whoever was able to perfect it first would be in the position to use it on whoever is aware of its existence. The great power of social media is they discovered they didn't have to control anyone's mind. They just put people in a bubble of misinformation until they make their own mind up. More of a story than a theory, 
but it correlates to some of these and makes me think some could be real. When I was younger I had this little stuffed animal dog I named Rocky. One night, my younger sisters and I, who all slept in the same room so we could hang out together, were messing around, and I two handed overhead tossed Rocky into the wall directly in front of my bed. He hit the wall, slid down behind whatever was in front of my bed, and was never seen again. I immediately went to go get him and he just wasn't anywhere. We tore the whole entire small room apart. We all saw the event occur. Over time the room has been completely emptied out, everything in it rearranged, walls painted, everything and no Rocky. He just completely phased out of existence. Makes me think he glitched out of the system or something. That the universe is infinite and there could be billions of other living organisms that all know about us and have significantly better technology and could wipe us out at any moment but choose to leave us be because they know that we don't know about them. Kinda like some indigenous tribes that live secluded and don't know that we are this civilized and technologically advanced. The theory that we're all quantum immortals and when someone dies in our reality for them they just keep on going in a reality where they didn't. This is very true. The theory basically says that all the parallel forms of ourselves are basically one infinite lifetime playing simultaneously and every time we survive a bad death experience, we actually continue in another lifetime. Spontaneous combustion. I watched a strange but true episode about this as a child and was convinced I'd randomly burst into flames one day. I'm over it now but that was my top fear for a long time. I've looked into it. Nearly every case happened while the person was drinking and smoking at the same time, which kind of explains it. Some time in the future, if we don't disappear before, humans will probably be able to bioengineer themselves to avoid death by old age. Most probably only the richest people would get this, founding an immortal elite of dynasties that will be able to rule nations by themselves, while common people simply keep dying as always. Now almost everyone think of death as something normal and inevitable, as part of our nature. But then, in that hypothetical future, death will be seen like a disease which cure it's kept away from common people by that ruling elite. This is basically the premise of the show Altered Carbon. Give it a watch, you might like it. This is pretty cliche but the theory that your whole known life you've been in a coma and have imagined everything. Your family isn't really your family and everyone and everything doesn't actually exist. Then when you wake up you'll have to live through life all over again with connections you've made to fake people. I like that this thread is filled with nightmarish death alien apocalypse universe ending scenarios but the top post is about someone's mother-in-law coming to live with them. Truly a minfuck. I had a professor in college who taught physics and he explained why we will likely never come across aliens. The universe is about 14 billion years old. Over the course of that time, it's likely that intelligent life, besides life on earth, has existed. However, 14 billion years is an insanely long time. Other life forms have probably risen and fallen thousands of times over. Extreme dynasties with technology we can only dream of having have probably existed. Life forms could have lasted hundreds of thousands of years and still not even be close to our timeline. The chances of other intelligent life forms existing at the same time as humans. In the 14 billion years the universe has hosted a possibility for life. Is really unlikely. Statistically, intelligent life to have formed prospered, or even existed at the same time as humans is extremely small simply due to the absolute drop in a bucket that we are on terms of time. We may very well be completely alone in the universe. May or not be a theory, but the first thing I thought of was that feeling you get when you're on top of a building and think what if I jumped or when you're driving and think what if I just swerve into traffic. Well it's actually got a name. El Apple du Vidi. French for the call of the void. I always thought the idea of some ethereal presence calling you towards darkness. Creepy. Yeah, when I heard of this theory I did more research into it as I have experienced this before and apparently what causes it is by doing the thing you are in fear of happening you're eliminating the fear and the anxiety of the what if. I don't know if I worded it right but it's very interesting. Years ago when I was seriously dating my now wife, Almost every time we started to have sexy time her mother would call up. Seems strange, then disgusting when we found the hidden camera when moving her out. Not a theory, but a condition. 
Sometimes a pregnant woman's brain can just break. She begins to believe her child isn't hers, or that it's a demon, or an alien. The worst part is these are perfectly healthy people who were otherwise happy and well adjusted beforehand. But when they get so far along in their pregnancy, the hormones can do something in their brain to change them completely. They become obsessed with the idea that their baby isn't theirs, is some foreign object invading their body. The idea that for some people the happiest time in their life can be a time of pain and madness for others is terrifying. Especially since there's just no telling if or when it will happen. More of a philosophical idea rather than a theory, but solipsism. The idea that you are the only one that is real and that exists in this world. Everyone else and everything else is fake or is an illusion. What about anti-solipsism, where you are fake and everyone and everything else is real? That everyone you know who's dead is watching you now 24 stroke 7, even as you jerk off, and when you die they all come to greet you. They got other things to do like talk to their dead buddies. Our world is out perception of our surroundings in our three-dimensional life. It's possible that we are living amongst beings, things and events that we cannot experience because we are three dimensions and they are not. Oh frick I remember this theory now. The galleon bottleneck theory. Basically the reason we've never encountered or been contacted by aliens is because they're all dead. Every alien species that evolved to form advanced societies eventually outgrew their planet and destroyed themselves, like we are. Some people have had some strange NDEs, near-death experiences. Going through websites cataloging them can be a trip. I'm willing to attribute some of them to brain damage and some as legit though I'll never be able to tell which is which. Deathbed visions give me a warmer sense of security. I can't imagine how peaceful it must be to die and see your deceased loved ones there to ensure you make it safely to the other side. Okay this is a weird one but me and my dad seen this one guy come out the gas station and he was bald and pale as crap with no hair at all. He was walking away from us as we were sitting in our truck eating. And I told my dad that he looked weird and resembled what people call the Mib. And that he might be a alien. I know it sounds dumb but this guy just didn't look real. He looked so odd. When right when I said that to my dad, the guy quickly looked at me like he had heard me. He was like 20 feet away and we had our windows up. Right when he looked at me I panicked and did the chin down nod that guys usually do and he nodded back and turned away. And then drove around us once and did the index finger wave almost like he knew what I had said. But that crap had me thinking for quite some time. I still bet to my dad that he was alien or something because with his weird demeanor and looks he fit the profile. The universe could be dying, and we'd have no way to know until we just suddenly vanish from existence. There could be a sort of quantum energy wave. Can't remember what it's called because it's been so long since I read about it. Zero point collapse, maybe? Vacuum bubble burst? But whatever it is, it's an energy wave that starts at some point and spreads outward at the speed of light, annihilating any matter, energy, and even space-time in its path. Because the wave travels at the speed of light, it is invisible. We would have no way of seeing it coming, because any light emitted by it would hit us at the exact same time that the wave itself hits us. So, all of a sudden, the sun might just vanish from existence. We wouldn't notice because the sun's light from 8 minutes ago would still be reaching us. 8 minutes later, the earth just vanishes from existence. No warning. No trace. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.